We present your county informational tape service for meetings in the month of April. Bargaining Fundamentals with Duan Woodland, President of National Farmers Organization. Recently, he spoke at Great Falls, Montana. We've been excerpting highlights from these discussions because he reviews collective bargaining for agriculture. Here, Devon Woodland discusses grain bargaining. Grain is important because it is the key to all agriculture pricing, particularly feed grain. And of course, feed grain and the, the milling grains run close together and they follow a parallel. But feed grain is extremely important because it is the key to all agriculture pricing. It is the input item into milk, into hogs, cattle. Grain is the key. And you must get in a position to price grain if you're ever going to have a, a lasting effect on any other farm commodity. What determines a profit or loss as far as feeding hogs is what my feed costs. The thing that determines a profit or loss when I feed cattle is what my feed costs. The thing that determines a profit or loss when I'm milking cows is what my feed costs. And so feed is extremely important. And one of the challenges of the organization is as we represent all these commodities is to keep the dairyman and the hogman and the cattleman from feeling that the price of grain is too high. And then Woodland said it's a challenge with a lesson to be derived. What we have to learn as producers is we have been living off of each other and the dairyman has only made money when he could buy grain cheap, not realizing the need of the grain producer and the hog and the cattle man, so we've been leeching off from each other. Now, the price of grain is not too high. We have to take the approach that the price of cattle and hogs and milk is too low. And so when that grain producer begins to make a profit, it isn't because he's too high that the others aren't making money. It's because they have got to boost theirs, and they can't live off of that grain producer. And so that's a hard lesson to learn, but we must learn it. Then a point about keeping control of the flow. Now, you must have inventory control of grain. That is a must. It must come. For example, if I have a strong cash market on grain, I'll move my grain into a cash market. If I have a weak cash market, what do I do? I begin to look for ways to market that grain through a secondary market. I'll increase the number of hogs, I'll increase the number of cows I milk, or I'll increase the number of cattle on feed. And so, Grain, a weak market in grain, will destroy every other farm market. Devon Woodlands on Fundamentals of Agricultural Collective Bargaining. National farmers held 80 meetings at 40 places throughout the grain-producing states to build big grain blocks for bargaining at the Gulf. $4.50 and a half for corn, five twenty-five for wheat, and $10 for soybeans. Ty Robinson of the NFO Reporter and Jack Cruz of Here's Info covered them. Here's Ty talking to Laverne Jensen of Irwin, South Dakota, that state's president of AAM. Is this pretty typical of what you run into across the state? I would say yes. There's, there's people that are signing up, and then there's those that are skeptical and will go home and think about it. Uh, they'll decide, no, I'm going to sit back, and maybe they're going to get that price up there, and I won't have to block my grain. I can sell mine then. This is what happens all the time between farmers. Laverne, you gave a little speech here at this meeting, and you put it to them pretty straightforward, and yet uh, you got some applause when you got through. The time has come that we have to do something, and if we don't get it done now, we're looking down the road where we're going to lose our, our towns, our cities. We're already losing our smaller ones. We're going to lose our bigger ones. Ty at Granite Falls, Minnesota, visiting with the chair of the meeting, Carmen Fernholz. How do you think your meetings went today? I would say, Ty, they've been a total success and the enthusiasm that was generated was something I haven't seen for eight, ten years. Then in grain sign-up, I think we signed up at least 50, probably 60 percent of the eligible bushels at both meetings today, Ty. And how many people did you have attend between the two meetings and how much grain was there? A total of approximately 120 to 130 people at both meetings and inventory bushels were a about a million. And now to Holdridge, Nebraska with Jack Cruz. This is Don Nelson, is that right? And uh, you just put, you signed some grain on this block. Don, what county are you from? I'm from Franklin County. And you're not an NFO member, is that correct? I'm not right now. 
How many bushels are we talking about? 14,000. Addison Johnson, is that right, sir? That's right. Was this a pretty good meeting in your opinion? I think it was a good meeting. Uh, I think uh, we got to do something to help ourselves out, and I think this is the time to be doing it. Put 15,000 bushels of corn. And what's your name, sir? Burley Lush. Burley, did you, you signed up some grain. How much grain did you sign up today? 14,500. At Eustis, Nebraska, Cruz also talked to Doug Gangenbaugh, who signed a million bushels. He's telling Jack about the results of getting grain prices up. And I think that this has got to be turned around, and whenever it is turned around, you would have great success stories, is to somehow get equal to or more than your local market. And at that time, I think that we would have a large following. Doug Gangenbaugh at Eustis, Nebraska. And now we present Bob Ard, who's been putting together big blocks of grain for bargaining at the Gulf. Bob, what's the purpose of this, these meetings for a grain block? Well, Phil, the 1983 grain crop was short. The grain pipeline is very tight, and yet the grain prices were going down. The grain trade, they were challenging the American farmer and saying that uh, you're not going to do anything about the price anyway. The American farmer said, uh, we've had enough of it, and we're going to uh, price our own commodities. Here's Info has been doing coverage of these grain meetings for the block. Uh, give us some of the specifics on this, like the prices, what's it done to the price structure so far, and how's it going? Well, since February 23rd, when we had the uh, nationwide grain meeting uh, connected by telephone communications, we've seen the grain prices turn around from a downtrend to an uptrend. We've seen uh, 50 cents added to a bushel of soybeans in the market. We've seen corn go up about 20 cents a bushel and wheat around 15 to 18 cents a bushel. What are the prices for these, these Gulf blocks? Uh, the farmers established the prices uh, at uh, $10 a bushel for soybeans, bases at the Gulf, uh, $4.50 a bushel for corn, and uh, $5 a bushel for uh, wheat, bases uh, Minneapolis. The $4.50 corn is based uh, at the Gulf. Now, just generally speaking, Bob, how are the meetings going? Is there interest? The interest is uh, fantastic. In fact, we're finding uh, producers that are asking for contracts to take home and so they can talk to their neighbors. They sign their neighbors up and send the contracts in. We've got a lot of people that are asking for contracts over the telephone. We send the contracts to them, they fill them out, they send them back, and uh, this is the way the Green Gulf Block is building. Bob Arndt of the National Farmers Organization. These green meetings he has been coordinating are historic in that on a nationwide scale, for the first time, Grain producers are able to communicate with each other at a given moment while assembling a commodity block for sale for a price determined by the producers. In recent weeks, with the obviously unjustified downward trend in farm commodity prices, there's been an increased interest on the part of farmers to help themselves in the marketplace. Today we're going to talk to John Peterson, an NFO collection point rep at Caledonia, Minnesota, he operates one of approximately 130 hog collection points in the nationwide collection, dispatch, and delivery system. The Caledonia Point was recently moved there, upgrading its location in that area. We've increased from, oh, six months before De September 1st, we were running about 180 head a week, and since then we've been running 500 a week. In the last two weeks we ran, uh, we averaged 775. Do you think the increase is because the, the, uh, hog producers in that area see the advantage of going through the NFO system? Well, there's the advantage, and we've had a lot of work done by local members. Just for a moment, explain how a collection point works in the NFO. What does it do? Well, right here, we, we've noticed that, especially in the last six months, it has raised the overall market in the, in the county by 50 cents to a dollar a hundred. Before that, uh, we were always in the low end of the interior highway, and now we're on the upper end, and, and there's days that we're a dollar, a dollar and a half over the market. Why would they raise the prices in the area because they know you're there? Because of the extra number of hogs, and, and in order to get them, they have to, they have to pay for them. I see. They feel that if they don't raise the price, then your point has the capability of moving them somewhere else? Right. What advantage would you say that you have over the old marketing system? We have the day-ahead pricing most of the time, and... Uh, We've got the insured check and the honest weight, which is nowadays is probably as important as anything. Is there any growth uh, in your in participation in this point in the area, John? Yes, since uh, December 1st, we've had 40 new members. We've had four new milk shippers, and we've had seven.
71 new shippers to the point. Why do you think this came about? Is it that the people in the area just uh, got on the ball more and got uh, going up and down the roads and getting more interest in it? Is that right. it? Right. And then we've had we've had some help from Corning, and uh, they were in this area last week. They made 102 contacts, and there was only five or six out of the 102 that weren't interested. John Peterson, an NFO point rep, describing a classic example of how bargaining works to upgrade the price level in a whole area. This always happens when the volume going through an NFO point increases. It isn't the symptom of advancing prices, it's the cause. And now onward to Jack Cruz in the country. He's at an NFO collection point at Winona, Minnesota. I've got Marilyn Drecon here, who's the point secretary. I was here this week uh, to see m non-members to try to get them to participate in our Cull Cow program. She arranged riders. She arranged places for us to go. Uh, she's done an outstanding job. Marilyn, uh, is your husband a member? Yes, we've been members since, we're lifetime members. We've been members since 1960. Do you see an increase uh, since you've been in the collection point? Do you see a little more effort? Do you see more people coming in? Oh, yes. We had about 55 new members, or new shippers, this last year. And uh, we've increased our production about twice over what it was the year before. What we're saying in the country is, try us, you'll like us. And I think that's really working because uh, the best NFO member is a satisfied one. If he ships through us and he's happy, that's a good member. But it takes teamwork like you have and your collection point operator, John. Yesterday we talked to some, we saw quite a few cattle. We saw some Angus, and of course we saw an awful lot of Holstein steers. Uh, and we've got a man that works these counties up here, Iowa and Minnesota and part of Wisconsin, Pete Lammers. Pete, uh, have you seen an increase since you started with us? Yes, I've seen a tremendous increase, and that's due to the team effort with my collection point people, my collection point secretaries, their reps, the meat committees. Uh, I've seen a tremendous increase in interest and volume. We met him on the road last week. We just visited with a cattle uh, feeder who had about a thousand head and uh, we had his name we were going to have pete call him and we saw pete we crossed him on the road and chased him down and gave him the name did you get any result yes he indicated an interest in forward contracting and he also indicated an interest in the nfo supplying feeder cattle for him uh, that same day i called the caledonia collection point john the collection point man gave me a name. I went to see the farmer. I booked 18 fast years into FDL Foods at Dubuque that same afternoon yet. The teamwork we're talking about, uh, where you got the collection point operators uh, more or less as a fixed base operator, and then you've got your field personnel out in the field, and if you got good communications, things really pop. Jack Cruz at uh, Winona, Minnesota Collection Point. We have presented your county informational tape service for April meetings. Compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the broadcast division, National Farmers. I'm Phil Allen, and that for this month is something to think about.